Welcome to the life and teachings of Guru Lahiri Mahashaya, vegetarian in Autobiography of Yogi by Pramahansa Yogananda Vegetarian, Part 1 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. Since its first publication in 1946, the book Autobiography of a Yogi has inspired countless truth seekers around the world. In particular, it was through this book, originally written in English, that many Westerners were introduced to the teachings of meditation and Kriya Yoga. The autobiography contains the exceptional life story of the renowned Indian yogi and enlightened master, Pramahansa Yogananda, vegetarian, who was born in 1893. In his pages are Yogananda's candid and beautifully expressed accounts of his encounters with many saints and yogis during his youth, about meeting his master Shri Yukteswar vegetarian and training for 10 years under his guidance, and about his coming to the United States of America in 1920. Other highlights from this autobiography are Yogananda's memories of his master's master, the venerated Lahiri Mahashaya vegetarian, as well as his meeting with the enlightened master and immortal saint Mahavatar Babaji, vegetarian. In 1920, Pramahansa Yogananda founded the spiritual organization Self-Realization Fellowship, or SRF, and before that, in 1917, the Yogoda Satsanga Society of India, or YSS. Both still serve as instruments for spreading the teachings of the beloved Master. On today's program, we are honored to commemorate the birth of the revered enlightened Master, Lahiri Mahashaya, vegetarian. As part of this special occasion, we will present readings about his life and teachings from the book Autobiography of a Yogi by Pramahansa Yogananda, Vegetarian. Chapter 35 The Christ-like Life of Lahiri Mahashaya The eternal bond of guru and disciple that existed between John and Jesus was present also for Babaji and Lahiri Mahashaya. With tender solicitude, the deathless Guru swam the lithium waters that swirled between the last two lives of his disciple, and guided the successive steps taken by the child and then by the man Lahiri Mahashaya. It was not until the disciple had reached his 33rd year that Babaji deemed the time to be right to openly re-establish the never-severed link. Then, after their brief meeting near Raniket, the selfless master banished his dearly beloved disciple from the little mountain group, releasing him for an outward world mission. My son, I shall come whenever you need me. What mortal lover can bestow that infinite promise? Unknown to society in general, a great spiritual renaissance began to flow from a remote corner of Benares. Just as the fragrance of flowers cannot be suppressed, so Lahiri Mahashaya, quietly living as an ideal householder, could not hide his innate glory. Slowly, from every part of India, the devotee bees sought the divine nectar of the liberated master. Day after day, one or two devotees besought the sublime guru for Kriya initiation. In addition to these spiritual duties and to those of his business and family life, the great master took an enthusiastic interest in education. He organized many study groups and played an active part in the growth of a large high school in the Bengali Tola section of Benares. 
His regular discourses on the scriptures came to be called his Gita Assembly, eagerly attended by many truth seekers. By these manifold activities, Lahiri Mahashaya sought to answer the common challenge. After performing one's business and social duties, where is the time for devotional meditation? The harmoniously balanced life of the great householder Guru became the silent inspiration of thousands of questioning hearts. Earning only a modest salary, thrifty, unostentatious, accessible to all, the Master carried on naturally and happily in the path of worldly life. Though ensconced in the seat of the Supreme One, Lahiri Mahashaya showed reverence to all men, irrespective of their differing merits. When his devotees saluted him, he bowed in turn to them. With a childlike humility, the Master often touched the feet of others but seldom allowed them to pay him similar honor, even though such obeisance toward the Guru is an ancient Oriental custom. A significant feature of Lahiri Mahashaya's life was his gift of Kriya initiation to those of every faith. Not Hindus only, but Muslims and Christians were among his foremost disciples, monists and dualists, those of all faiths or of no established faith were impartially received and instructed by the universal Guru. One of his highly advanced disciples was Abdul Ghafur Khan, a Mohammedan. It shows great courage on the part of Lahiri Mahashaya that although a high caste Brahmin, he tried his utmost to dissolve the rigid caste bigotry of his time. Those from every walk of life found shelter under the Master's omnipresent wings. Like all God-inspired prophets, Lahiri Mahashaya gave new hope to the outcasts and downtrodden of society. Always remember that you belong to no one, and no one belongs to you. Reflect that someday you will certainly have to leave everything in this world, so make the acquaintanceship of God now, the great Guru told his disciples. Prepare yourself for the coming astral journey of death by daily riding in the balloon of God perception. Through delusion you are perceiving yourself as a bundle of flesh and bones, which at best is a nest of troubles. Meditate unceasingly that you may quickly behold yourself as the infinite essence, free from every form of misery. Cease being a prisoner of the body, using the secret key of Kriya, learn to escape into spirit. The great Guru encouraged his various students to adhere to the good traditional discipline of their own faith, stressing the all-inclusive nature of Kriya as a practical technique of liberation. Lahiri Mahashaya then gave his disciples liberty to express their lives in conformance with environment and upbringing. A Muslim should perform his Salah worship four times daily, the Master pointed out. Four times daily a Hindu should sit in meditation. A Christian should go down on his knees four times daily, praying to God and then reading the Bible. With wise discernment, the Guru guided his followers into the paths of bhakti, devotion, karma action, jnana, wisdom or raja, royal or complete yogas, according to each man's natural tendencies. The master, who was slow to give his permission to devotees wishing to enter the formal path of monkhood, always cautioned them to first reflect well on the austerities of the monastic life. The great Guru taught his disciples to avoid theoretical discussion of the scriptures. He only is wise who devotes himself to realizing, not reading only, the ancient revelations, he said. Solve all your problems through meditation exchange unprofitable religious speculations for actual God contact.
clear your mind of dogmatic theological debris, let in the fresh healing waters of direct perception. Attune yourself to the active inner guidance. The divine voice has the answer to every dilemma of life. Though man's ingenuity for getting himself into trouble appears to be endless, the infinite sucker is no less resourceful. For more information, please visit Project Gutenberg, gutenberg.org. Vegan, a torchbearer of compassion. Cherished viewers, thank you for your gracious presence today for words of wisdom.